I think Nigerians are yearning for those content, but the truth is that nobody is creating as much, you know. So people, Nigerians actually are looking for all kinds of content, but it's what you feed them they will take, they'll yeah. take yeah, to get. But they are looking for content. They don't back away from any content that is delivered properly, mm. you know, and any content that is actually speaking to them, mm. you know. So it's that's kind of where why we kind of started with Nigeria. This podcast is sponsored by Go Money. Open a new bank account from your phone in less than three minutes. I moved back, a new week, new episode. And we've got, as you always know, we've got the best people for you. You're going to learn a lot today about business, people that started podcast before podcasting was even called podcasting. <laughs> right? You're going to have some really interesting conversations. We've got Sally West, still, still locked in London. Come back to Nigeria. Sometimes I feel I just feel like I could just bring her from the TV and just put her back on this room. Yep. So yeah. And obviously there's a lot going on right now. So we need to learn from some vets in this in this space who have been in the media space for a while. So it'll be interesting to see how the dynamics of media has changed over a period of time. So yeah. I've no other than my G, Mr. Chinedu Abili Modi. Yeah, thank you very much. The main man in the building. He's, he's the co-founder and CXO. What does X CXO? What does X mean? Just experience. Experience. Yeah. Chief experience officer. Uh, I, I don't want to be a CEO. That, <laughs> that's just to CXO of Vibio. Yeah. Okay. So, Mr. Shinji, please tell us some more about yourself. Introduce yourself a little bit. What kind of got you into this space? How did you get ended up being? Uh, All right. We'll find out video. Oh, cool, cool. Okay, so um, currently, uh, as you mentioned, co-founder and chief experience officer of Vibio um, are titles that I don't take lightly. Um, I've actually had a very, very interesting journey. I wear a number of hats, so um, I think I can clock it. It'll be like about 15, 16 years of being, you know, in digital, when digital wasn't even in the space um as both someone who started doing graphic design um and then started building websites with with platforms like microsoft front page mm. so <laughs> people <laughs> then let, let me use that to actually get people to know my age you wow. know microsoft front page so this is this product that uh, microsoft had that allowed people to design Website, websites you know and so that really opened my up the world for me to you know the, the opportunities of what websites could be you know um and um, going from that, you know, to doing uh, motion graphics, understanding design, design itself. I worked in a couple of design organizations. Um, I worked in a Lagos design organization that was focused on brand design. Brand identity design um, also fell under that, that. So evolved the graphic design into brand identity design. Understood why design was important. Um, understood why the fact that it wasn't just about colors and, you know, how you put fonts together but you know being able to communicate the message through using design mm. you know so um moved into learning digital you know but from a very interesting standpoint so um i remember when um well, first thing that happened was um way back as far as 20 2009 mm. yeah 2009 um, the Faith Foundation had this interesting program called the Institute for Venture Design. Okay. Uh, so based on my whole background then, you know, I was the guy who they were called to do designs for brands, uh, logos. So I, I interacted with a lot of business people, people mm. who were starting their own businesses at that point, you know. So my skills were really, really important for most of those guys. Because they want to communicate once and for all what they are doing, mm. you understand um, how they are doing whatever they are doing, you know, in a little icon or a little font, you know. So I was doing a lot of that. I, you know, I got to the point where I was doing logos very fast in really? hours. Yeah. So I it it really was like a like a crash course in that. But I knew there was something a bit more. I hadn't gone to business school or anything like that. My my own point, like I said, was just design mm. naturally. So when the Institute of Venture Design came up, you know, it was like this limited 16, 17 people program backed with by Stanford, you know. So 
um, I went for the test, <laughs> you <laughs> know, and um, I can't forget they told us to do something with origami and structural design mm. with paper, you know, and we quickly built a team. Uh, Hi, I'm Backers. We have something amazing for you today. Ever thought about actually owning a piece of property in the UK and finding it difficult to navigate through the market? Well, we have the service that you need. The London Home Finders Service is here to help you through that process. Their expert team can allow you to source the right properties, put the team together in terms of solicitors, mortgage brokers that can get you the properties at the right price and can help you secure your investment. Now, why would you want to consider this? Putting, investing in UK properties seems to be one of the safest methods for investing in properties. And the demand for properties in the UK is increasingly going high every day. So this is opportunity allows you to own a property in the UK that you can either use for rental or you can use for as a home for yourself. So find your best properties today at London Home Finder Services. And don't forget to subscribe to I Move Back. Um, and, you know, as short as that test was, it showed, you know, that um, the team wasn't made up of any structural engineer, you know. Um, sure, that our team at that point in time, funny enough, had a guy who was an educationalist. Um, and the other guy, I think... Um, I think the other guy was a, was a developer or something, you know, so it was just a random mix. The other team that came second actually had a structural engineer. Oh, wow. You know, he was, a, he, was a, he was an engineer. He built cars, you know, but then it was three of us. And um, one of the things that you quickly learn, you know, in that whole environment was ability to build teams very quickly, mm -hmm. you know gain everybody's strong points, focus on something as a vision and say, mm -hmm. okay, this is what we're about to achieve. We may not have the skill sets, we may not have learned it, but we're able to put that skill set together, experiment it, create and build. And we broke a record that even the guys here at Stanford were like, um, representatives were like, this was one of the highest records they've ever seen oh, you wow. know, this year. So got into that program, you know, and then started learning about venture design. And so venture design is basically um, what really helped me start up the idea with Vibio. Because um, learning venture design, even during that period, my program, my product wasn't even um, close to Vibio. Mm. Uh, yeah, it wasn't media. It was actually um, something called, um, it was something for, it was something for schools. When I built a platform for schools, a learning, a learning platform where schools, something like Facebook for schools, mm. basically. You know, then I, the idea was just to learn. everywhere. Yeah. yeah, but it was it was kind of, that was our project. That's what we worked on. But I'll never forget the steps and things that are required, key things that are learned, the strategy, you know, type ideas in business, you know, and also self-discovery, you know. So um, at some point, it begins to click that, you know, you kind of kind of know the kind of person you are, mm. you know. And then, and then you you're able to, to yes, yeah, what you want to do. And it's it becomes easier when you're communicating what you're doing, mm. you know, uh, when you're doing anything. Mm. You might find yourself in any organization. Um, at the beginning, you might think you're just, just the regular IT guy yeah. or the regular sales guy. Mm. Do you understand? But then you, if you keep probing, you realize that maybe you're the sales guy that understands IT. Strange, oh, yeah, yeah. you understand, know and then something, like something, touch, yeah. something happens, and then because you're the sales guy that understands IT, maybe who knows, you become the organization's top sales person mm. for IT products. Yeah. You don't even know that maybe no one else can do that kind of stuff, you know. So one of the things I kind of found out that I did very quickly was um, I could speak a lot of languages, like not the traditional languages, but yeah. I can speak a lot of languages to people in terms of skills. Mm. So if somebody was a technologist or somebody was an, a visionary, yeah, a business person, I could have this conversation. Yeah. So I could sit down in a team, right? Because the team is made up of so many people. You know, you have developers talking to designers, you have designers talking to strategists, mm. you have strategists talking to business people, mm. and everybody has what they want to achieve, mm. you know? But if you leave these people, right? What happens is everybody will just have their motive of this. And the designer might be saying, I want to build the best product that 
you know, has the best design. Yeah, yeah. But he's not just not doing he or she's not doing it based on how engineering would support that. And so the engineer is like but Why? this won't work. <laughs> yeah, you know, I want to build something that's solid for yeah. engineering. And you know, the already the first thing you even get is when you when you're building products these days, you will see that fight standard oh, wow. between the designer and the engineer. Like the designer is going this way, the engineer is going that that's way. Weird. And sometimes it doesn't make products go mm. exactly as planned. Maybe the visionary might even be more skewed towards engineering. You mm. see that the most most visionaries who are in tech today <clears throat> are skewed more towards engineering because maybe they're back end engineers who started up, you know, had an idea and then mm. some seed capital was pushed their way, you know. So when you look at what they've designed, you're like, this thing, there's something wrong with it, mm. you know. I'll give you an example, Facebook, even Google, something wrong with those things in the beginning. Yeah, everything the design was whack. The yeah, yeah, yeah. Then, but if you see something like Spotify, Mm. Design wasn't work because if you see the history of how Spotify even started, you know they they played an emphasis on design. Mm. So from the beginning, engineering was there, but designers took the lead. Mm. Um, I can't remember the name of the founder, but which is because he's Swedish, but so it's actually pronounced his name. But I know that one of the things they made was like they wanted to make sure that their product was so pop culture relevant mm. and that culture culture relevance was very key for them that design played an instrumental part and also the swedish also have some design ethics that mm. go with them if we had startups coming out of germany i would have been Worried. i'd love to see <laughs> oh, really? design would be 100 yeah. percent functional so, design is functional design yeah, is yeah. balance yeah so i mean uh, it's very interesting about i i i need to get into uh, the whole kind of design philosophy, yeah. Bauhaus movie and all that kind of stuff back in the day, but not anymore. <laughs> now, this, a, a little bit about kind of, um, talked about the, the progression of, of Vibio, right? Yeah. So what was the initial idea that you had with Vibio? What was it like? Okay, so like I mean, so I'm the co-founder, like, mm -hmm. um, um, and Vibio's story was just simple. Um, the co the, my other co-founder, a guy called Raymond Hilma, mm -hmm. um, came around my house. So he's a childhood friend of ours. Um, and he was like, he had just experienced Spotify. So this I'm talking about was 2011. Okay. Yeah. So like I mentioned, I had done this program in 2009, came out, caught out of venture design. So my brain was a bit hotter, not now. <laughs> <laughs> so 2011, he comes and he was like, dude, there's this product, Spotify. Yeah. You're the guy that builds everything. That's the way he was like, he was the guy, uh, the guy that builds everything. Please let's build something like Spotify. Mm. That you build something like Spotify, people would you know listen to music mm. and stuff like that. I said, yeah, but there'll be a problem. I said what? I said licensing. Mm. You get we the first thing you're going to spend millions in licensing fees. It was like how? I said by the time you're trying to get music, even it's even easier now. Mm -hmm. Then imagine you know first of all there was more secular music. Nigerian music wasn't like a lot. Mm -hmm. I think I remember that it was MI and some other guys that were really rocking during yeah, that yeah, period. So yeah. even to license their music, then like any small mistake, mm -hmm. and you're slammed. So I was like, if we wanted to do the startup as a startup, right, we should focus on something else that is a bit more, you know, license free. Mm -hmm. I was like, what's that? It's a podcast. Mm -hmm. I was listening to podcasts then, you know, so I was a big. Apple podcast person. Okay. You know? So my own journey with podcasts started with Apple podcast mm. when Apple podcast was really popping. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So it was simple. Apple was doing this. I was like, ah, this thing this? will catch you somehow yeah. like in Nigeria because what, what they even now open it a bit more was a guy called Yomi Black. I don't know if you guys know Yomi. Yomi yeah. Black is, um, he's a skit maker now. More skit. No, he's not a skit maker now. He's more of a Producer, director, mm -hmm. in this thing. Does but, he have like a puffy hair? Yes. Okay, I know him, yeah. But we went to we went to school together. So I knew Yomi as a funny guy. So Yomi used to actually do something called the Radio Hit Show. Okay. Audio. Yeah. And then he would share it on Hawkshare back then. <clears throat> like a mixtape out of <laughs> my, you know, my boot kind of stuff. Yeah, Just yeah. talking about music generally. And it was growing organically, you know. Like what I mean organically was catching fire. This guy had a... 
had a newsletter list way back when newsletter list didn't even exist, about 14,000 people. And he would just, you know, send out his newsletters mm, and just with the link. Saying, yeah. yeah, people would download it. People recognized his voice. He would go anywhere in Nigeria, not just even in Nigeria, outside Nigeria. And people would say, oh, I used to listen to the radio hit show, you know. So I was like, that is the future, mm. you know, of, you know, this podcast. But it's not even just about podcast, basically. I was still, and I'm still saying that, you know, podcast is going to be the future of radio, you know, stand, stand by it. So the idea, 20, 2011, we iterated, um, we first got some guys in India to build the prototype. I got involved with the branding. <laughs> like, so I said I wasn't going to design a logo, you know, but I did got some guys in, um, I think the guy who helped us do the logo was not in Nigeria. I um, got a designer of um, one of these freelance platforms, Miguel. Well, I think it was from Spain. Yeah. And Miguel freaked out when I was like, you know what, just chill. Let me sketch this logo. <laughs> like, yeah. So sketch logo. I said, this is this is it. This is what it should look like. This was. I was like, so he was happy. He was like, ah, one of the, the one of the clients that clarity. We knew what we wanted. So we started off, but it was tough because product was too ahead of its time. Really? So I was like, yeah. So when we got into the market originally in 2014, mm. we came in and boom, we faced one very big problem. You know, which is that um, first of all, the market wasn't ready. Ready. Um, secondly, was um, the way the the the, the sign up process was to put content on VBO. Um, then we had to put it up. So even we didn't even have the manpower mm. to even run VBO. You get so okay, that's what yeah. happened. So from 2014 to 2017, we we're running it. Like, but we were running in like a side project, you mm-hmm. know, so it was easier. Raymond is in construction. I was a consultant, you know, go back. I go back to working. So I now joined the digital agency. Mm-hmm. So that's really where VBO now really started to make sense. Makes sense yeah. Because in digital agency from about 2014 to 2017 mm-hmm. was when boom, everything went haywire. So oh, Facebook, wow. um, YouTube yeah. blew up. Year on year, budget was moving from traditional advertising to, to digital. digital yeah. so I was watching it. And so I kind of also really knew, like I said, that the, it will come in time, you know, that this thing will still blow up because it was only natural, you know. So the first thing you see with traditional media and the alignment to digital media is mm. this. You said alignment with um, TV, for example, right? So like about 10 years ago, mm. even about... When you even start clocking the timelines for most of these so, products, uh, you see that something like Netflix, well, 10, 15 years ago, there was no way. <laughs> yeah. Ne- Do you I, I, don't, I don't think like Netflix actually like, when he first got introduced, because I don't know, I was a bit different. We used to have something called Love Films. Okay. I don't know if you remember Love Films. No. So Love Films was, you could... You, it was like a video club. Yeah. Uh, maybe. Kind, of, kind of like a video club. So you go online, mm-hmm. you choose a film that you want to watch, and then they send it to you in your post. Yeah, so that's that's, that's like a video, a video club. That's right, yeah. the so the, the, the thing was even Netflix evolved from being a video club like that. Yes, post. yes, yes. So yes, yes, during yes. the evolutions, like I mentioned, you have TV, right? Mm. We had we had satellite TV, then we had cable TV. Yeah, yeah. Jiggets gradually. So we had cable TV. So the likes of DSTV came into play, you know. And um, during the period when DSTV was really, really making waves, mm-hmm. you understand? Um, something like Netflix came on board. It would. It looked like a joke. It was never no, going to pick. People were going to keep this thing. Today, we know what's happening. Do you understand? Oh, wow. With streaming. Yeah. Yes, it's even it's everywhere, you know. Um, the, the, the guys, multi-choice are... They had to bring out show marks, you know. <laughs> they they basically told um, you know, they posted their reports recently, you know, shareholders didn't down. get any money. You know, and so shareholders, you know, were investing more money into show marks, you know. So that basically would tell you where the future of the oh, business TV's is brand, basically yeah. going, you know. And so with advertising, right, is the same process because advertising really leverages on media, mm. you know. And so advertising follows the money. Yeah, you get if anything, I thought it was something like it's advertisers basically are like stock market people. Mm-hmm. You get because 
they basically know where the money goes with most of these channels and the rest. And then they start hedging towards that for their brand, mm. you know. So when digital first started, it was almost like, mm, it won't, no hit, it no won't kick your yeah. ass. And radio will always be radio, boom. Mm. TV will always be TV, you know, print will always be print. First guys that got whacked with TV and yeah, were print, actually, the newspapers. Oh, wow. So it now became obvious that even, um, there was a time when data came in and then we realized that, with all the printing circulation mm-hmm. that happened, you know, the all the combined newspapers, the newspaper people that we had in Nigeria, they didn't print up to one million papers okay. daily. So if you think about that, I don't think it was even up to a million, maybe a million monthly. Like the printing presses were even producing that lot. much yeah. newspapers. So that media wasn't that wide. You know what I'm saying? So when guys like blogs like Lina KJ and Bella Niger blew, it it wasn't an accident, you know, because they were already hitting over a million daily digital, you know, and those numbers were showing clicks were, you know, bringing more results than actually putting your ads on newspapers mm-hmm. and newspapers like Punch or Vanguard or whatever. And when you, when you get to look at, I think, you know, I'm talking about, I mean, it's not, it wasn't up to a million, sorry, it's about a hundred K, you know, yeah, of, of ad, prints yeah. per day. Like that's what, so. If a newspaper came out at the most, if maybe one newspaper was seen by three people, mm. if it was a stretch, that media only reached about three hundred thousand people there, and that's a combination of all the newspapers. Leader could give you one million views a day. Yeah, but the the, the question becomes like, do you think like when she started doing her blogging and stuff like that? That was when people started picking up on the, the whole point of like Nigeria specifically, though, the kind of the power of digital marketing. No, not really. Or so, do you think there were other platforms that were followed so through? So Linda was Linda. Linda, Linda me, I'll put it. She was like the apex. You get mm. so um, when we were in the agency, right? It was it was kind of digital agencies that made it even easier for clients because the numbers were just there. Mm. You get and so if you wanted to deliver numbers you would obviously optimize for the best platforms. So I would say, okay, fine. This is not even, we're trying to get the client's money alone. You're just plain, plain logic. If you took money, you know, from a client, maybe 500K, whatever, and you wanted to get good reach because at the end of the day, you want that client to be happy, mm. to keep paying you. Where will you put the money? Mm. You understand? You put it in the place that was delivering the highest. And Linda's numbers were actually doing quite well. Mm. It got, got because a lot of people, you know, were looking for Nigerian news and stuff. And the way she was reporting, um, it was kind of easier for them as opposed to newspaper, Paper, yeah. uh, punch or whatever. Mm. So Nigerians, even in diaspora, started actually using Linda as a reference point oh, wow. for just, yeah. you know, so that traffic really was legit yeah, at that yeah. point. So to talk to me a little bit though, like living on, okay. So you, on, on your on your profile, it says radio on demand, but yeah. you, you, you decided to say radio on demand and same thing as podcasts. Yes. Is there any difference? Let me just make sure I'm clear. Okay. So the, the radio on demand is actually just a coined term. Yeah. Right. It's like video on demand. Okay. Like YouTube uh, yes. is video of demand. Yes, exactly. Radio on demand uh, yeah. is kind of the other So... But the, so we wanted to do audio on demand, but audio on demand would have meant wearing music or other mm. things. So, but if we say radio on demand, people kind of get it because when you think about radio, you think about shows. Yeah. yeah. And the truth is that every show is a potential podcast. Oh, okay. That Simple. Makes sense. Yeah. yeah. So the basically, so when we say radio on demand, that's actually just the the terminology behind it. Yeah. You know, that at the end of the day, um, VBO is actually radio on demand. And we believe that podcast is the future of radio. So that's how I just break it down. Yeah. yeah. I know that's good. So do you have any questions for Che? What are you thinking? I just want to understand the revenue model a bit better. So what's if if you're looking at your, your income statement now, where's the majority of your revenue coming from? Is it from ads or or is it from the host, the show host? Where does it come from? Okay, so ideally, it's meant to come from the from the um, brands, which is the people that will advertise on the mm. shows. We get, but um, every little secret is um, we've kept VBO like on ice for a while, and just recently we said, okay, we're going we're going to market again. So, but 
we cleared all the whole um, huddles that we had before about people being able to, you know, use the platform, yeah. sign up by themselves and the rest. And we've cleaned that up by making it now more easier. People can create their own accounts, mm -hmm. click on their show, but we can also add your show on the platform and be you, your platform, your um, show will be there. So when you now um, claim your show, mm -hmm. you now have access to revenue to advertise okay. on it yeah so we yeah. can't even place ads on your show mm. until you claim your show because when you claim your show it comes with a wallet automatically mm. and then boom your wallet is now tied to our ad mm. revenue generator so we basically want to go with ads mm. um and we're going with programmatic ads so um the way you know programmatic works is we still said what we're taking off the radio model. <laughs> yeah. Oh yeah. So quick disclaimer also. I, I was once head of digital for a radio group. So okay. the radio group that is should I mention their name? <laughs> yeah, you can go on okay, the Mega name. Mega Electric. So owners of um, Beat FM, Class um, Classic FM, Nigeria FM and anyway. And um there's a revenue revenue uh, model that works for radio, mm. you know. Quietly, radio is actually doing quite well. Nothing has. So, what is the in. what is the revenue model for that? Though? So, the advertising. So, yeah. the advertising really works like they they already will go out and source for the branding mm -hmm. for the brands. So, um, one of, I think one of the challenges that most of the podcasters were having or having is being able to talk to brands yeah. directly. Um, so you remember that thing I talked about language. Mm. You guys don't speak the languages that the advertising agencies are yeah. speaking. So it would be difficult to tell or convince somebody, even if you had the numbers in mm. quotes or where the numbers are going, that you deserve this advertising. So it won't price well, you know. But if you use programmatic, boom, it becomes easier. You can tell the advertiser, which is what we're doing with the platforms, mm. right, that they pay for every listen. Oh, okay, yeah. and every listen can be charged at you know as this as a hundred naira. So what now happens is that if you're doing numbers as high as one thousand, ten thousand, mm. fifteen thousand, it's a hundred naira. It's there. The dashboard is clicking it on every listen, yeah. and <laughs> all <by> yeah, <laughs> and all the advertiser is just doing just yeah. paying for that listen. So now it begins to make more value for them, mm. more value sense, you know, and it can go to the tail end. The tail end is what digital really applies, mm. you know, but. Traditional radio can't do that. So where they stop is, they stop at, oh, okay, we're selling you these impressions um, like this because this is the amount of people that listen to our show. Mm. So this belt, peak period, it's you. they tell us 10 million people listen to radio yeah. or something like that. They, they, give, you a broad they thing, give you a yeah. broad figure. So that's why those numbers are fixed. Yeah. yeah. But with digital, the numbers can vary mm. because whether or not 10,000 people listen, it's not... No, BBO's yeah. business, do you understand? If people wake up in the morning and that's what your show they want to listen to, they listen to the show. Yeah. They add advertising plays randomly, you know, and so the skill is now more important. Um, we've identified as at now, we've cataloged over 160 shows. Oh, wow. You guys a lot. actually that's love a lot podcasts. Of yeah, so that's yeah. when, this when it, means, it began to make sense. Mm. So we have a dashboard that's showing us the amount of shows, you know, mm. so, um, talked about data in the beginning you know when you when Tara and I mentioned we see any data there's no data <laughs> you, oh, have, to, no yes, data you have to actually yeah. kind of get your own data yourself so nobody can tell us right how many podcasts are in Nigeria oh, even wow. Spotify can't tell you so how do you get that data though? yeah so that's what that's what we're saying that mm. the only other way we can do it is actually you know having a platform like ours yeah, that can host and everything, catalog, yeah. yes and getting so we're getting our own data mm. by ourselves and already that's what i said already we're at 160 shows mm. already 160 shows that have nigerian origin nigerian descent mm. you know hosting those shows and most likely probably 80 percent of them you know reside in lagos mm. now another very interesting information that's coming up is that other states are actually producing shows we just don't hear about them. Yeah, <laughs> that's true. You get it so might not come to your yeah, okay, yeah, it's with you, yeah. but it's happening. And so, where people normally get their podcasts from, generally, you know, the recommendations aren't as powerful. So let me mm. put it this way: for example, if somebody only only the only way they would actually hear about you know I move back podcast is maybe you guys have done your publicity yeah. with a circle of friends, and your circle of friends would influence that circle exactly, and then yeah. it spreads out a bit, you know, and there may be some tech tactical groups here and there, mm. you know, 
But then maybe some advertising on social media, you know, and then people who are interested in it will now be listening mm-hmm. to it. But once they get to any platform they're listening to, which is maybe Apple or mm-hmm. what they will see as recommendation are other podcasts that maybe, you know, foreign podcasts and yeah. stuff. And then they won't know that maybe there are other podcasts that are in your region. In the region that you can tap into. So that's something we want to kind of try and solve. So, so I want to so, know something about like the brands and ads ads that stuff right yeah so i've always kind of um kept track of watching other shows and other things going on and there's always a, a question of it seems to be a lot of like consumer goods that seems to be advertising mm. on most of these things like alcohol food drinks like very easy consumer goods right but then again there are certain people like certain avenues where they target other type of customers that probably who we probably would pay more than just a consumer goods product, right? Yeah. So how do you how do you kind of match? Because the idea is that because you have so many different shows on your platform, yes, and yeah, you want to match those with like advertisers. Yeah. How do you think about that process? Well, okay, so so you're kind of digging up into some of our IP stuff, but I'll share some things okay, that we try. Ahead. So the first thing is the way we catalog shows on VBA is different from every other podcast platform. So we have 12 key categories on the platform um, from enterprise to entertainment lifestyle. And then we're pulling all the data points in for them. Now, like you generally mentioned, each of those data points mean that they have specific kind of target audience that will respond to those shows and it will show. So it will show even in terms of the profile more people are skewing towards male or female in that mm. particular category, towards the particular age range. You understand? The data is actually coming in, you know. So when you actually have that kind of data, you can show and profile to the particular advertisers because some advertisers want to reach CEO thinking people. Mm. You understand? And CEO thinking people might not listen to a music countdown show. Mm you get like that's not going to be what they're going to be listening to an enterprise related show for example that talks about business that helps them you know big decisions mm. it could be news it could be politics you know so those are categories already on video and so those categories would have their own weight okay yeah. yes and then you have you know people who like fast moving consumer goods as well you know which are much easier they might flow into the entertainment and the rest. um it's not a, it's not actually the issue actually is not is not even the advertisers. The issue is the availability of the medium that is available. And I'll explain oh, okay. what I mean. Okay. So we have more entertainment content yeah. in this region, you know. So there's a lot of music content, there's a lot of content around gist, you know, people mm. just sitting around and you hardly really find educational content, for mm. example. Um and even we've seen the data skewing more. So the categories are big, podcast, right? Yeah, but almost about 30% of it is lifestyle, mm, gist, yeah, yeah. Yeah. trends, those gisting and trends and stuff like that. Then maybe another 25% entertainment. Those two already are already thinking about 50. So when, you, when people are creating podcasts, a lot of people are just skewing towards that side a mm. bit more. So you can imagine that more, that is a reflection of the media and what generally Nigerians are, care about. Care about yeah. you know, so, we couldn't find a political podcast. Mm. We had an election. You guys, yeah, guys, yeah. we had an election this period. <laughs> Nobody was talking about the election. The all three, yeah. That's kind true. Of the Nobody, yeah. no podcast. There wasn't, yeah. you know. So even when we look at the political space on podcasts, this list, there are up to 10 podcasts that we've identified. Mm. You know, so what, that's what I'm just trying to this. So sometimes also, um, and those kind of podcasts, it could also mean that even at that's why I said like wait, because it also mean that at the end of the day, those podcasts, enterprise, politics, even even spirituality, you know, and I don't just mean Christian spirituality, there's Islam spirituality, mm. you know, that needs to go out. There's, you know, woke on spirituality that needs to go out as well. Yeah. You know, where people are not, you know, <laughs> but there are people there are people intrigued. talking about and so at the end of the day, if those kind of contents actually are coming out, they may actually even carry more higher weight because mm. They are less, so they can get more premium, and then the kind of people that want to advertise on them too, like you Maybe mentioned, might be those yeah. kind of people. They won't be fast moving consumer goods, for mm. example, or stuff like that. They will be more in tune with the kind of audience that. So, I mean, let's say like, have you? 
obviously you must have gained a lot of data from that's coming into your platform, right? Yes. And what would you be? What would you? How would you categorize the typical Nigerian audience? Okay, like so I, I just mentioned you towards most of those key things yeah. I mentioned. Um, so um, from a production point of view, um, we need more content that is created outside those genres of entertainment and like okay um when you know investors are like oh well you i think you guys can scale all around africa i'm saying mm. yeah but <laughs> just solving nigeria's problem it's, it's, trust it's a tough, me it's a tough one alone it's a tough one alone and cracking nigeria would automatically give us the blueprint to cut crack africa mm. it sounds very you know one size fits all but it's as a Nigerian and an African, just people people who, who are here kind of get it, mm. you know, because it's easy. It's kind of, it will make it easier because Nigeria is that market that if you get right, you know, it also comes with this diaspora advantage, mm. one. And then two, also the Nigerians in other African countries kind of resonate the core of your the product. Core, yeah. you know? so, 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 I mean, I'm always, I've always been um, surprised by, not really surprised, but I would say, the kind of influence that Big Brother has, mm. I think it's a little bit addictive, mm. right? And it's not it's not the same in other places in the world, right? Big Brother Nigeria, Big Brother Niger, Africa has a very huge influence on the populace. So what do you think is the reason why, right? Because it's not the first, Nigeria is not the first time that Big Brother happened. Big Brother happened all around the yeah. world before it gets yeah. to Nigeria. But it seems that when it's on, it's like eighty percent of, of the attention of the yeah. of certain demographics is all towards it's that. Skewed towards so, it. so how? Why do you think that's the that's the? Okay, so I have a I have a theory, right? And um, it might it might just be not. It's just based on my own opinion. Okay, so nobody should quote me. <laughs> do you get? But I think that um, Big Brother actually first of all reflects the average Nigerian. So it's not one of those programs where you need a high skill set to go into, you know, like Idols are Africa, Idols Nigeria, or any other of those programs. Mm. You know, you need something. You could it could be a game show. You need to be intelligent. Like who wants to be a millionaire? Yeah. Do you get so, or you need to be or like Idols. You need to be able to sing mm. or act or something. You need some so the entry skills. level is basically it's, like I could be there. I could be. Yeah, so they can they see themselves there. Thank you. Yeah. So what they, what happens is that those these young people can actually see themselves in these people mm. you get, which is one. And then two, the price money is ridiculous. Mm. So it's a overnight success story mm. for most almost everybody that has gone through Big Brother. They will even tell you to the point where just getting into Big Brother is enough. Even mm. if you don't win the price money, you have blown. Yeah. You know I mean? So that's why there's a lot of attention for young people there because actually that's what media kind of does. You mm. know, you see yourself there, that person representing your trials, your story, your challenges, mm. you know, things that, you know, it could have been better for you, you know, but man, <laughs> you're, not, you're not there. So you just think it's the same yeah. problem with, if you if you check on the ground, but nobody talks about it's the same problem with gambling. People yeah, are, yeah, that's yeah, another betting. thing. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> betting in this that's town. That's another bet. <laughs> those, are, oh, yeah. those things are huge. Your yeah, betting yeah. guys are the. In short, I don't even know why everybody even. You're talking about FMCGs. You're talking about the betting, betting guys, guys and their the budgets. <laughs> <laughs> the budgets are ridiculous. Yeah. Funny enough, I went to a rural community a couple of weeks ago. Yeah. And I was doing a survey, so I was trying to provide electricity to the people there, and I was trying to see, okay, how. Would they be able to afford the electricity that I'm going to provide? Mm. So I was just interviewing like all the, everyone that having the business there and just asking them how much do you make a month. I realized that there was the betting shop makes more money than anybody else in, in that the rural area. In the rural area. Literally, there more money it. than the people who are selling food, more money than the, <laughs> literally more money than everyone if you, else. If you encounter data enough in this country, you will get a lot of stories like this that yeah. you understand where things flow. You know, and sometimes you understand why religion is the way it is, not mm, really because of God. True. You know, there's so many factors, you know, that that play an important role in that, you know. So, like I said, there first of all, Nigeria has a, a massive market. Mm. That market, we don't put it into scale mm. enough. That's the truth. So, anything you have here that you want to scale appropriately, 
you can actually scale it. You know, if you if you have a product that actually is supposed to get to mm. two hundred thousand people, we have two hundred million people. Mm. You get to two hundred thousand people, 200, and yeah, you yeah. make your money, and you 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 become an overnight millionaire. You get some people ha- don't even have the capacity to do. <laughs> Let's just, maybe um two hundred million, like I mentioned. Let's just say one percent of Nigeria. You know that's two. That's two million. Mm. You get some people don't even have the capacity to do two percent of serving Nigeria. That doesn't. It doesn't make a dent in this in the market space. No, mm. you get like there 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 are two million two two million and they are cleaning out on whatever they are selling. You know, some of those products on the shelf you see, you know, the units they produce are not that much, <laughs> but they are there and mm. they are because they are the biggest because you know on the regular maybe. 0.5% of Nigerians consume their products mm. every other day. Yeah, yeah. You understand? And they're, they're, they're doing well. They're so, happy with the numbers, yeah. yeah. So, I mean, uh, the, the numbers in Nigeria is also very interesting. Some people say, look, you got 200 million people, but not it, not 200 million people can afford certain things, right? So yeah. it's like, it's not, it's kind of not really accurate in terms of if you're doing a market projection. So what I wanted to know was, Let's say, for example, do you believe that in the media space in Nigeria, do you feel like there's enough opportunities like going forward? Or do you think that the attention has a lot? Because the idea is the currency media's attention, right? Yes. And do you think that the attention has already been occupied by most people? There's, there's a space for new attention mm. to be created. Yes, I think so. I think media media is the only space really that attention will always be, you know, on the point because it keeps evolving. The the crux of media, the media space is evolution. And a lot of the times, you know, that particular attention doesn't even come from places that the media guys plan. Mm. It just it just comes, you know, nobody knew that social media would be a media Did channel. <laughs> you know, they, they, they never really would have said and you know and that it's a core the core factor for digitals, you know. So and then you now have things like um things like um what they call it sorry netflix mm. you know so streaming now is a form of media you yeah know? um recently i saw something and i was like yikes so i first of all i watch a lot of content for mm. stuff like founders and the rest mm-hmm. so founder stories i've watched uh, spotify's the playlist yeah yes it was on netflix very nice stuff uh but there's another one i recently watched you know which was super super pumped okay the story of uber I haven't seen. Is that on Netflix? It's on Netflix. It's on, it? it's on HBO's. Oh, so it's on HBO's it's on Showmax. Yeah. Yeah. Very nice stuff. Mm. But it tells the story of Uber, right? And how Uber was a cab company. Cab. So it's cab. Mm. So it was supposed to be Uber cabs. Yeah. Dropping that cab, I'm just going with Uber. Uber alone. Opened up a lot of mental possibilities. First of all, okay. they were able to shake off some litigation because they were no longer a cab company. Mm. Uber could be whatever Uber wanted to be. Yeah. And that always now makes me understand, you know, why most of these guys don't even ensure. So we go we go with Vibio. Yeah. We don't go with Vibio Media or Vibio this one. Register as Vibio Media, right. but we go with Vibio because Vibio can be anything yeah. you want to be. I didn't brand Facebook can be anything. Yeah. So you it begins to understand why these why guys can be anything they yeah. want to be. Google can be anything it wants to be. You know what I'm saying? So the name just stays and then they keep evolving and morphing. So um Uber right now can actually deploy media. In short, they don't need can actually deploy media. They're deploying media. They're testing it out. <laughs> All those cars mm. can, can have digital billboards Screens. on top of them. And inside, and inside them... The cars. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Just like New York. It happens, it happens all the time in New York. Yeah. Boom. New York all of a sudden, <laughs> it turns into something else. Yeah. Do you get? Because even when it, when they have the, this thing, they can partner with with Nigerian mm. in or, or the, uh, so we call them out of home companies. Yeah. But yeah. they are media companies. So the guys do billboards and the rest. Hey, let me tell you a funny story. Mm-hmm. So most of these guys in the media, this um billboard guys, right? Billboard is actually prime media. Yeah, it's biggest. S, can you talk share some billboard numbers? I know you. <laughs> I know you. Uh, billboard, your, your billboard, billboard guys will tell you that they are not even billboard guys. They are real estate guys. Yeah, that's how big they are. In quotes, this kind of disruption can actually shake them. You know where you now have out of work out of media hitting anywhere. You mm. know as much as and. It's supposed to be ride hailing up, <laughs> encroaching into, yeah, the, into media the media space, yeah, into advertising, yeah, yeah, yeah. No, 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 no. So, 
It's a love, it's love so, that going so there's on. a lot to unpack with yeah. that just that statement. So when you talk about evolution, evolution can come from anywhere. Mm. It's so a, you, you think the next next uh next point of media will be like unconventional brands that you don't expect yes, we don't know. into the media. We don't space. know. Like we don't even know because okay, so here's where it gets interesting, right? And that's what tech actually does. So um, we used to define define the platform as something about I call it the six C's. So recently, I kind of even made it like the seven C's. But you have um, platforms usually will have content, context, consumer, mm. community, commerce. You know, uh, and then recently I put capital in there. Uh, you know, it's but important. like because apart from the fact that commerce is happening, capital is like an investment that mm. needs to spark up a couple of things. So this particular a mixture right allows any platform to rise mm-hmm. as a mixture of anything you get as long as you're able to deliver this seven key things you know yeah. so if tomorrow a food company starts to put i'm just you know putting it out there start to deliver starts delivering homemade meals mm. to people at home or jumia for example and then for every jumia product that goes mm-hmm. out it goes out with a flyer mm-hmm. that's advertising yeah do you get it goes out with a flyer something this is so, so many things can happen it all just depends on who is sitting down in that innovation seat and yeah. says you know what Let's try this thing out. Let's, out, let's yeah. see where it works. Let's see where it goes. And then, boom, it, capital is applied there. Mm. Commerce happens. Platform begins to take shape, you know. Mm-hmm. So, that's why community begins to form. There's content. There's context. That context is basically the definition of the kind of people that you want to reach mm. or what kind of messaging you want to say, you know. And then, things just start happening. Yeah. You know, so, it can it can come from anywhere. Wow. It can come from anywhere. So, I mean, I'm always interested in, like, understanding how kind of we the human mind and programming the media has on the human mind mm. right <laughs> okay yes so, <laughs> so and i don't know in nigeria mm. i know that obviously there's, there's stuff like that happening because like i mean it probably happens other places in the world i wish it does <laughs> but i feel like we're being programmed a lot here because we think <laughs> a, a lot of people have very similar thinking yes right um in in terms of we love money we love sex yeah we love like it's it's pushed heavily, right? We love like there's a vibe. Yeah, the Nigerian thing. The Sometimes vibe. in different yeah. spaces have different things that they communicate. Exactly. Do you, the American dream. Exactly. Exactly. Like the American dream. Yeah. Exactly. So, so do you feel like the media pu- like pushes those things, or do you feel like somebody is behind the scenes saying, "Let's push this narrative. Let's make people feel this way." Let like w- what do you think? It's true. I mean, it's not even. I, I, did, I don't think um, it's something to overthink. You get um, there's something I just see. You know, I'm, as, as someone who's in the media, you have to be very conscious about what you're consuming. Mm. That's the truth, you know. So um, I also like to reference a lot of stuff that I watch and read about. But you could actually reference something as easy as ad ad men. So there was something called the Mad Men era. Mm. It's a show called Mad Men. Yeah, yeah. 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 So Mad Men actually you know tells the story of the 1960s, 1970s advertising as it grew, and what influenced advertising. There's a lot of psychology came into advertising in the form of strategic thinking and strategy mm. and planning media. You know, so, so there's a lot of psyche behind stuff. There's a lot of psyche why things became things like soap operas because they were trying to sell soap. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and I'm, you know, so when I even talking about the American dream, it's designed. Mm. You get um, Uncle Sam is designed. Those are all communication cues. Mm. Yeah, so it's not by accident. Nothing is by accident. Exactly. Get, happens, yeah, it's yeah. nothing by accident. Americans really paved the way for it, you know, mm. but it's been there from Europe, you know. So the Nazis used it, branding, yeah. they used it. Wow. Yeah, it's there. It's just under your nose under and your, your nose, eyes yeah. and everything, but we're not just, you know, so use it. The swastika is a brand, is an icon. Is there anything that you can point in Nigeria <sighs> that's saying, look, we're clearly being manipulated by this? <sighs> so, <laughs> I will say, you know, there's a lot of, there's a lot of political manipulation. I will say, mm. you know, I won't want to say extra beyond that, but I think there's a lot of political manipulation. There's a lot of more you look the less you see. If you have a good media team, right, we can actually dangle 
some news around and then distract from what actually the main events are. You know, you can tire people out. Mm. You can mentally you can mentally make people tired and say, you know, they're not chasing this thing again. Do you think or, that the uh um what's the girl that recently won the Guinness World Record? That's Hilda. Yeah. Yeah. Even that was a distraction. Hilda Hilda stuff. Man, no. I don't think it was a distraction because um I think it was more of an investment from her as a brand. She, like she has the solid team. Mm. Like the team knew this was what they were trying to achieve. They put a budget behind it, you know. So there was, there was actually a plan, you know. I, in short, if you dig deeper, you know, you will find out the media. I don't want to call their name, but you will find out the media agency that actually mm. worked out here. Their Hilda's plan. She had a three month thing coming, you know. And mm. so when she deployed it, it was easy. You understand? Um, I don't think it was a distraction per se. Maybe because you know the, the 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 recent presidency happened during that period. It's you possible. Never know what it's actually happened. you know. So actually, <laughs> you might be right, but you know what? That's what's scaring towards conspiracy theories. So I, have, <laughs> I have this big, I have this friend who says you know. So once once you want to just try, just say it's bare palo talk. Bare palo talk. <laughs> <laughs> so, so, so no, no, do you have any, 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 any questions you're thinking in your head? Any, what's what's in your mind? I mean. I love what's been covered so far uh, because a lot of the questions I had were around the data that you're receiving, how you're analysing it. So I think that's great. Um, I also kind of just wanted to ask, what's the future for Vibio? For example, are we going to start seeing like, you know, podcast award events? Are we going to have the community for the, for the hosts on the platform? Is there going to be an introduction of video? I know video was mentioned earlier. So... What are the plans in the next three to five years for the company? Mm. All right. So, um, the first thing is, uh, I'm as the co-founder, right? Um, my own vision really is to keep Vibio like an audio content platform, you know. So, and there's a reason for it. I feel like um, you when you, when video started getting applied into podcast. Mm. Um, it stops people from mm. using their imagination a bit more mm. to apply on the content. So yes, you can still use video you know, as, an, as backup, but I think there should be a channel or a, a podcast platform that still provides audio strictly mm -hmm. where people can say, okay, fine, I just want to just listen to audio. And mm. so like retain radio as it is, you know, maybe when I exit, <laughs> you know, somebody else might, you know, take up the mantle and say, you know yeah. what, that's the future. We should go into video, you know. So that's on one point. Um, for for the vi for the vision vision, um, I will want to be a unicorn standard. And okay. being a unicorn isn't just about even making money. Mm. Being a unicorn is actually being able to scale to the point where we can actually um, deploy, you know, the solution mm. all across Africa. Mm. Um, <clears throat> we want to be able to do things that you know a lot of other. Um, we call them audio content pl platforms, you know, and I'm talking about the likes of Apple, Spodcast, Spotify, and the rest. Haven't really, really cracked because it's an African problem, mm. you know. So the African problems like language barriers. Yeah. You get in, so we're kind of almost saying the same thing, but you're saying you're, you have content in Kenya. We can learn from stuff in Tanzania, yeah. you know, and we can even learn from stuff in local languages. And so nobody would. Because they won't make those investments, mm. you know. What I'm so <laughs> nobody will make those investments of saying, okay, let's feasible. let's get the rural guys yeah, in on the mix, yeah. you know. <laughs> because whether we like it or not, those guys have a lot of content. Yeah. We just we just haven't tapped into it, you know. What I'm um, people are losing their local languages on the regular because mm. we're not keeping those local languages in banter, right, yeah. you know. What I'm so English is just the main thing. But if we had podcasting Igbo, mm. Hausa, you know, stand even as much as even Sapele, Wari, all mm. those guys, you know, they, the people, those guys would have their own people mm. and those people will also keep those languages relevant. Right, and, yeah. Uh, yeah. So those are the, that's kind of, that's really what we want to be able so to as do. So you want to kind of think as a, as a method of preserving the African languages uh, heritage. And then who knows, yeah. maybe AI can now help us solve some things, you know, yeah, but yeah. that, you know, those are our research and development, you know. Yeah. yeah. So, but that's basically Basically, where we're going, where on the so going to market for us is going to market, you know. But as every other thing, we want to keep raising. So yeah. we're in that point where 
as as it is right now, Vibio has never raised seed capital. Oh wow! Yeah, since we've and you've been just been we've just 2014. been we've been bootstrapping. Wow. You know, and Are you, then, because you're selfish. No, 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 no. We've actually <laughs> pitched yeah. to a number. Of, so we've been pitching to a lot of VCs. Yeah, yeah, we've pitched to a lot of VCs, but we've been getting a lot of news. Oh, okay. Yeah, and we're kind of we kind of understand because even inside we get the full gist of oh okay, media tech how many media techs exist, you know, compared to where the money is flowing with, mm. with you know, fintech and um, logistics mm. and e-commerce and the rest. So at some point, they're like, you know, maybe we would have to float our own VC fund. Yeah. Maybe. <laughs> because um, also, it's not just even about VBO. Mm. They're, the guys in media, one of the things is they've, they've actually been so used to selling media for so long okay that they generate the, the money by themselves remember that case i was talking about 0.5 percent one percent of nigerian market no media company thinks about scaling oh they, think just, about they just yeah. choose their they just choose their, re, their yeah, circle yeah. a radio station there's no pan-african nigerian radio station apart from radio nigeria which okay. is the government-owned radio station yeah. Nobody actually thought I was a radio station to say, okay, you know what? I want to be in the 36 states of Nigeria, making me a full Pan-African. Nobody has that reach. Mm. The biggest, maybe the biggest, probably has in five, six states. Yeah. Yeah, that's the highest. That's the maximum. That's yeah. the maximum. You know, nobody has really thought about this. And those kind of things will require investment. And so push. Yeah. media rate basically doesn't get that kind of investment. Mm. Advertising agencies don't get that kind of investment yeah. because well, you, you start, immediately you start, you're making, you're kind of making money. They've yeah. never invested in tech before. Okay. Do you get? So we kind of are like breaking the barrier of trying to get tech going and to get tech going, you have to invest in tech. Yeah, you got to you put know? money So, yeah. and the VCs, they're not used to it. What they're used to is <laughs> fintech this and so yeah. there's also kind but of they'll tr- come around that's the thing like sometimes you just have to wait for it for the time Thank and then you. when so that's, if you're the right time then they'll come around and put so that's what there. we feel like the timing is actually a bit more yeah. right you know and then it also speaks to the entrepreneurial story I, I actually had to start this story by saying i guess in 2011 yeah. well, in 2013 2023 yeah. sorry so that's over how many years now 11 years yeah. 11 so that's a, how long the idea has been on ground yeah. you know so my ideas don't survive that long. <laughs> no, that's yeah. good. So let's let's jump into some trivial questions quickly right. to see how much you know about your industry. All right. So, um, oh my God, is that interesting? Okay. <laughs> what is the estimated number of active podcasts worldwide as of 2023? Active podcasts yeah. worldwide. Okay. I think, I think let me maybe uh, use Spotify saying um, there were over... Um, so if I said they're over, uh, we had access to about two million podcasts. Correct. Yeah, on their own. Yeah. Correct. Right. Well, I think maybe, it, I think it's maybe more. Maybe that's where she used. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> I think it's more. Okay, which country has the highest percentage of podcast listeners as of twenty twenty three? Country, 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 Con- listeners. Yeah. Uh, it will be the United States, I think. Wrong. Oh, wait, wait, wait. Choo-choo. I'll ah. give you one more try. We'll give you last try, and then I'll tell you if you get it wrong. All right, podcast. And I have a li- feeling you get this wrong as well. Yeah, it might be. But podcast listeners, country, mm. country, 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 country. Uh, well, I'll just take a look at guys and say India. No, India. It's uh, South Korea. South Korea. South Korea. Oh, okay. Name yeah, one of the that. most popular pod- Nigerian podcasts as of twenty twenty three. One. Yeah. Just one. Name <laughs> one of the most. <laughs> one of the most. Hey guys, you know, uh, no. name. <laughs> would I say is the most that I want? Would, would the most be accurate? It depends on the rating, though. Okay, well, name one of the most. Yeah, it yeah. depends on the rating, but in top 10 categories, you know, we have guys like, um, I said what I said, podcast, um, TVT. Um, that's 20, you're saying 2023, right? Yeah. That's oh, 2023, year. yeah. I, yeah, okay. I'll give you. I said what I said is probably, yeah. it's probably close. This year. Yeah. This year, yeah. This year. Well, because so it depends, like I said, it depends on the rating. Um, I think um, who will be number one? So there was here, there was Loose Talks and the Narometric podcast, but I, I don't still feel like <sighs> no, 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 there's probably more. No, so Loose Talks actually just came back this year, yeah, yeah, but they call them the OGs of podcasts, yeah, yeah, because they kind of have wow. like good. 
And, you know, that's one thing that, like I said, that's one of the things about the space, you know. Mm. When they were doing podcasts, they had a very cult following. Yeah, you know? yeah, cult following, But yeah. they, it also, the timing was also weird, right. you know. They chilled for a bit, new cats in the game, like we say. <laughs> and, uh, and now they are back, <laughs> and, like, back to, to trying play, to take yeah. their crown, you know. So okay. it's interesting. And another question. Which Nigerian podcast host is also renowned author and speaker on leadership and personal development? This is a tough one. <laughs> Which Nigerian podcast host is a mm. renowned author, speaker on leadership and personal development? If it's a guy, maybe Chude. Mm. No, not Chude. It's Chude. It's Chude. Yeah, it'll be Chude. With an author. Yeah, an yeah, author. Okay, no, he's not an author. A renowned author, yeah. So this person is a renowned author. Mm. Nigerian. Nigerian, yeah. Author, speaker. And uh, speaker on leadership. He speaks on leadership and personal development. Not is not is it is it maybe somebody I mean no wrong mm. twice so the okay. answer is Fela Durotoye. Durotoye okay for a host of masters my breaks and ah yeah. see see I didn't even have that one last <laughs> but not the least what is the most popular genre of podcast worldwide worldwide yeah um so um I won't use our own data uh, <laughs> let's see if his data is correct. Uh, well, we can do it. Yeah, more of course. Africa, right? yeah, yeah, our our our, our category, categorization is a bit different. But if we said lifestyle, mm. it had to be something on that lifestyle. So it probably would be. <sighs> can I get options? Ah, uh, <laughs> uh, they can't or get entertainment. Us. No, 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 it's not. Ooh, wait, wait, wait. Yeah, because I think entertainment, entertainment might entertainment be might combined be together. It, it's, I think it's a, it's a subversion of entertainment, but I'll I, I, I I give you it's true crime. True crime, yeah. okay? Yeah. It seems to be the most popular podcast Whoa. worldwide. So that's like drama. Yeah. Okay. That's interesting. Maybe yeah. we should bring some more true crime yeah, yeah, conversations. Yeah. Speaking of that, too, that's another space that, you know, podcasters need to exp- explore. Yes. Content in that. And um, true crime, right? Something that I just even... So some guys just produced one hell yeah. of an X-rated content and... I think it will sell. Really? Because they're not really selling the extra. It's a story. Mm. But the way the story is told, it's interesting it's enough. interesting, yeah. Yeah, and, and, and podcast is, is one of those mediums that, like I said, will match your imagination. Yeah. Because you don't need to produce a movie or, you know, shoot a, shoot yeah, a just camera listen angle. And then, Just listen and like then use your voice to tell the story. Right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. So, I read the book, audio book. Oh, no, so it's a good... Um, but last before least, unless I you have one more question for... My honorable Mr. Chine do today. Uh, honorable. <laughs> let's, let's do you have one more question or should I go in for the president of Nigeria? <laughs> yeah, definitely your president. Okay, Nigeria. so regarding your industry right yeah. now, if you were the president of Nigeria, right, I don't be cliche, no cliche answers in terms okay. of I'm going to implement this policy. Da, 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 da. Like, what would you do differently? Like, let's say right now you were Mr. BAT right now in the office. Yeah. What would you do differently? <laughs> wow. <laughs> See, everybody, everybody, everybody has an answer to you. <laughs> You're staring right at the barrel of the gun. <laughs> <laughs> All right. But you, if, if, if it was me, basically, right. Um, <sighs> okay. I, I wouldn't want to be drastic and cut salaries because I think you need to cut salaries. But say, okay. I think it, it will be more about making investments, right? Um, making key investments in other resources mm. you get other resources to provide more jobs for people so um i used to have this fantasy based on what i grew up on there used to be this book geography book that will open up and shows all the resources in nigeria oh yeah, yeah, yeah. States, coco this yeah, timba blah, blah. I remember that. if i was president what i'll just do i'll do that catalog again <laughs> and try and even if you seed small small money break all the money into pieces mm. that maybe i'll invest in an nmpc or something and also invest in all those places really? simple so people can have jobs so you want and, to diversify yeah like, our uh, our revenue, revenue stream yeah. and you know and actually get people to have more to do you yeah. know so if it, if it is cocoa plantations let people go back to cocoa plantations if mm. it is mining gold whatever let people go back to all those things let's stop all this oil oil oil, yeah. oil thing it's just making it's too us much chilled and it's not really good for our general future. 
Yeah, the future is, is looking yeah. very bleak. If, yeah. it's, if it's only oil that we People know. have forgotten how to work. Yeah. Young people have forgotten how to work. You know, we just chill and, you know, feel like some level of entitlement. And then, you know, they look at their heroes through BBN. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That's good, their heroes. <laughs> No, no, no. N- nice having you, Chinedu. Thank you, guys. And yeah, I'll keep you up with Vi- Vibio. Yeah, Sorry, thank you. Sorry, Vibio. I got it wrong again. Yeah. But yeah, Vibio. Vibio. And then, yeah. So um, let us know kind of how we can get know more about your your company. Where can we find it? Oh, okay. So it's the easiest website in the world. Uh, we kind of looked that down. So it's Vibio, mm. but it's spelled like Vibe. So it's V-I-B-E double O. Mm. V-I-B-E double O dot com. Okay, nice. Lock in and you see everything you need to see. Yeah, I'm gonna. I'm actually gonna dive yeah. in, dive in today. And yeah, check, some check it stuff, out. Yeah. All the podcasts you're thinking of, and if there's podcasts that you like that you don't understand, just you know, reach out to us on social media. Same VBO handle yeah. on Twitter. This thing we we link up that podcast in minutes. No, nah, that's dope. That's yeah. dope. Thanks, man. Thank Thanks you. For me. Thank you for having me. No worries. Thank you. See you guys again. This podcast is sponsored by Go Money. Open a new bank account from your phone in less than three minutes.